Ugundena, Noawa Gaseta, Te Wakataige, Sagawihe Umgasta. I am Anadaga Eo Clan, uh, the Mudhouse side. My name is Sagawihe Myers, which means he brings good things to the people in Anadaga. In high school, I kind of just went through the motions. I didn't have a real plan, but towards the end there, I did decide I wanted to go to work as opposed to going to school. And so I originally meant to go work at a factory, but it closed down before I could. So I started out as a carpenter for a little while, but I'd always been involved with forestry and related stuff through my mother. She's a herbalist and a midwife, so I was always in the woods and I just naturally gravitated towards this type of work. I am a utility arborist for Hydro One. I trim and remove hazard trees around the power lines to keep the electricity on for people in Ontario. Before that I was working for Six Nations Forestry and I worked for Guyana State. So I was, and with my mother, out in the woods all the time. So I was already uh, on that path towards working in with outside with trees and whatnot and I seen a job posting for it and I thought it would be pretty interesting so I went and applied actually through great to get the job and it worked out. I put in my resume, I got the call for an interview and it's apprenticeship so all the things you learn is on the job, they teach you on the job, uh, there's a bit of schooling that you do, there's about eight weeks to start and then you're off and running. We did eight weeks of school to learn all the basics of forestry. We learned knots, we learned different uh, rope strengths, what our tools were used for. We did chainsaw courses, we did uh, climbing courses, rescuing each other courses. And then after the eight weeks, we went out as a crew and traveled all around Ontario removing hazard trees and trimming the trees away from the power lines under guidance of journeymen. So Hydro paid us the entire time for our, all of our schooling and they paid us on the job through the apprenticeship. At the end of it we got a $2,000 bonus which is pretty nice. You're going right out there, it's a dangerous job so you have to be on your toes the whole time. You have to know what you're doing out there. You have instructors right there next to you the whole time, but you really, really gotta stay focused so you don't get hurt or hurt anybody else. We would go to the yard, we'll have our morning meeting, we'll get our work orders, we'll head out to our trucks, we'll outfit our trucks with what we need, we'll do all our paperwork, uh, do our inspections on our gear, on our truck, and then we'll head out to the job site. We'll, when we get to the job site, we do a quick look around on what kind of work we have ahead of us. Then we fill out a tailboard, which is a, a form indicating all the hazards and all the things we will do to keep us and our coworkers safe as we work. We'll set up our truck, we will, or we'll climb trees and we will remove the limbs and the trees from proximity to the hydro lines. After that, we clean them up, chip them up, pack up all our gear, head back to the yard, turn in some paperwork, and then head on home. I'd say the most dangerous part is probably when you have to climb near large transmission lines. You don't want to come anywhere near them. You have to make sure everything's up to snuff. You, you don't take any shortcuts because that's how people get hurt or killed. So yeah, climbing trees near the uh, transmission lines is probably the most dangerous part. Be willing to learn, willing to listen, willing to work, willing to travel, and don't be afraid of heights. The pay is good, the hours are good. I work with an excellent crew. Um, the fact that it's dangerous actually keeps us all pretty tight and looking out for each other so that we can go home to our families and live life and not, you know, have to be, you know, like wheelchair or something like that. We look out for each other all the time out there.
almost kind of like zen-like where you are in the moment and only in the moment. You're just thinking about what's directly in front of you. You've talked this over with your crewmates. You come up with a plan and you just go out there and execute it. So when you start out, there's a lot of travel, absolutely. But over time, once you get into a full-time position and get to a full-time yard, there's not nearly as much. You go to the same yard every day. You go roughly around your area. And the only real extra travel we do is when there's a big storm that rolls through. And so we have to hit out of town to help restore the power. Like I said, you make a good wage, you'll get close to home. You will have uh, a certain sense of pride that comes with it when you get a job done. And like on Storm, I've had people coming up and you know giving me cookies and thanking me so much for turning the lights on just before Christmas. Like it's, it's a good feeling. And I think having more Ongwenhuli out there will help like when we do the, the work on the res because we're more, uh, we recognize what's going on, right? And it's our neighborhood and we want to take care of them too. We need more guys out there to do the work for ourselves too. We need more women too out there helping out to uh, keep, our, keep our power on and uh, keep it uh, safe for all of us around here. Just keep applying, find something you want to do something you might love and go for it. Don't hold back, go for it. You only got one life to live. Might as well do something you want to do. I needed help on making a resume. So I came to Great. They were able to help me do my resume, uh, help me go through the steps to apply. And that's that. They helped lots to get me here. I think anybody should come to Great because you can find the help that you need to move forward in life, like I did.